Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. The Common Core State Standards Initiative is an education initiative that seeks to align diverse state curricula with the principles of standards-based education. The initiative was sponsored by the National Governors Association. This education reform movement was designed to raise academic standards, graduation requirements, improve assessments, and strengthen accountability in all 50 states. But the Common Core Initiative has drawn criticism from across the political spectrum as a federal top-down takeover of state and local education systems. The Heritage Foundation argues that Common Core focuses on national standards and will do little to fix deeply ingrained problems and incentivize structures within the education system. Some education experts argue that Common Core standards lack sufficient public input and were driven by corporate interests and policymakers rather than experienced educators. Our guest today, Gretchen Loeb, has been interested in educational issues for over two decades. She is the founder of the Missouri Education Watchdog, an educational blog, and co-founder of Missouri Coalition Against Common Core, a site to inform Missourians on the Common Core issues. Gretchen Logue, welcome to Conversation. Thank you, Lee. Boy, that was a mouthful. Did I get it right? Pretty much. Okay, yeah. so we've encapsulated what it is we're gonna talk about today, but I know you have a whole lot more to say. First of all, what was it from your perspective that the people who were trying to found the idea of standards for students got wrong? Standards in and of themselves are not bad. We, we need standards in education and in fact the state, our state constitution in Missouri, gives the state the ability and the, and the authority to set the direction and development of the standards. So it's always been a state issue. Mm -hmm. What's different about Common Core is that the standards now are driven by two private trade organizations, you said the National Governors Association and the Chief Council of State School Officers. They What's that? <laughs> what, 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 I know what the, the national governors... Yes. CCSSO, mainly school chiefs, superintendents, they have all banded together. They are funded by the federal government. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they got together and they decided that the states, with the NGA, needed a, a set of standards that were common. Mm -hmm. And so funded by the federal government, they were the ones that created these standards that now 45 states have signed on to. What's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is that <coughs> the Nash, uh, the, it's, it's illegal. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the, well, but if the governors are doing it, how could it be illegal? I mean, they're well, the governors. Well, basically what you have. They're, and they're the, the superintendents. They're, well, yes, but the governors signed the authority to go with these consortia, but the governors really, there's been a question on whether they have the authority to actually do that. Mm -hmm. Because what they've done is that they've signed over the control of the standards for a state and put it in a consortium. Uh -huh. now, so, didn't Illinois, or, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. didn't Missouri s legislature sign off on this? No. Okay. This bypassed state legislators and it bypassed the voters. In fact, it bypassed the national legislators as well, Congress. Mm -hmm. Unlike No Child Left Behind that was signed, that is, was a law. Congress voted on the specifics of the law. What we would like people to start understanding about Common Core, it's a massive stimulus program. It's a $4.35 billion check that Congress gave Arne Duncan and said, here's a check. Who's Arne Duncan? Secretary of Education, okay. United States. You fix education. And it was kind of a hands-off sort of a thing. So what they did is if you think about it, the Department of Education is using these two organizations, the NGA and the CCSSO, as their surrogates. Federal government cannot set standards for states. They can't set curriculum. 
and they can't set personnel decisions. They can't set teacher evaluations. Why can't they? That is in the law. Okay. All right. They are. They are. Uh, they can't do it. Mm -hmm. So what they've done, in a sense, is that they have these surrogates that they're funding. They're doing it with federal money, and they're passing it off as being state led. What do you and your organization? think is going on? Well, as this initiative has gone forward, Arne Duncan has made it very clear is that they do want a national set of standards. Mm -hmm. Back in the early 2000s, states got a lot of money, a lot of grant money for state longitudinal data systems. What's that? Those are systems that are set up ostensibly to gather information for the workforce, for workforce information. So it was sold to states that this is going to be good for your economy. You're going to be able to see what your people know, what jobs are needed, that sort of thing. With Common Core state standards, the standards are assessments. They're standards and assessments that are controlled by these two organizations. The this assessments now, uh, standards are copyrighted, which is unique. Standards had never been copyrighted by states. So when standards are given to states through your consortium, Missouri is in a 26 state consortia, which is controlled out of Washington state. The state is not allowed to modify those standards at all. They're not allowed to modify the assessments. So what your teachers are teaching is handed down from the consortia. So your tests aren't local anymore. Your teachers don't get to see the assessments. They all have to be done on computers. So this is, this is, this is a real dramatic shift. But if you, if you go, going back to Common Core standards, everything is commonly coded. You have to have the same standards because you have to be able to track individual students, teachers, and principals now. And they have to be the same from state to state. So if you vary, you can't have any variables in there because then you don't know if what you're comparing is true or not. It may not be the same comparison. And so based on how a state or, or students do, then ostensibly you can say, well, this is working in this state and it's not working in this state, that type of thing. And, you, and so these state longitudinal data systems, they have to be able to kind of talk to each other because they have to have the same coded information. So that's your state longitudinal data system. And what we are seeing is that there's a whole other set of standards out there that track personality, income level, education level, that sort of thing. That will all be merged. I'm sure we know with the Affordable Health Care Act, all of this information is going to be merged in one big database. And so you're going to have your education information being merged with all of this other personal information. So you're saying that under Common Core, there's going to be a lot more personal data that's going to be collected by, I don't know, the federal government, but, but by by a higher uh, power, uh, a higher governmental agency. Well, what we have done in Missouri, we signed a memorandum of understanding with our consortia, which is Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortia, or what we call SBAC. That's how we kind of talk about it. You said Missouri? Missouri. Yeah. This is Missouri. Who in Missouri? You said the legislature's been bypassed. This so was who's been doing the signing? The governor and the commissioner and the State Board of Education. Okay. Who, except for the governor, are all appointed. Okay. So they sign this MOU and they say, all right, Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortia, whatever information you need from individual students, principals, and teachers, we will provide it. Then subsequently, the consortia signs a memorandum, memorandum of understanding with the D U.S. Department of Education. They agree that they will make any information accessible that the federal government needs. So Commissioner Nicastro, who is in Missouri, she states that Missouri will not share any information with anyone. Well, they're not going to really share it. 
they're going to be giving it or they're going to be giving the information that SBAC requests and then that information will be accessed by the federal government, whatever they need. The federal government then will share it with different federal agencies and any private research firms or third parties that they think need, needs the information for either product development or to make education better, to make the assessments better. So it sounds to me like, like this is more like corporate education rather than um, parent-based education. This is education that is a public-private partnership. I think of it as Solyndra. It's that the government has decided what sort of energy we need. They're going to put a lot of money into it and they're going to give it to private industry, private vendors. It, as I said, and as you pointed out, it bypassed the legislature and it bypassed voters. The, this mode of education is totally unaccountable to the voters. However, it's mandated that we pay for it. Now, this is a massive, as I said, it was a massive stimulus program. The funding runs out in September 2014. There is a question on how the consortia are going to survive. As I said, there were computer mandates, infrastructure. All schools have to have the, the broadband width. To do one elementary school in Francis Howe was going to cost a million dollars just for broadband width. What's that all about? Well, to do the assessments, you have to have computer access because all of your tests ultimately will be done on computers, not graded by the teachers. As I said, the teacher doesn't even see it, so the teacher doesn't know where the kids are failing or where they're excelling. So it goes into this computer bank and then it spits out where the kids are. These tests that are on the computers, these are, are, are like standardized tests. These are not like, well, let's, like, well, at least when I was in school, you know, the teacher would pull out and we'd write, you know, they'd give us a sheet with some questions on it and then you fill out from what you read in your books and from the lecture. Mm -hmm. it, that's not going away, is it? I mean, not everything's going into the computer. You're talking about a set of standardized questions and tests to evaluate what has been learned at other yes. moments in the class. Yes, right. yes. And I, so to do that, they had to spend a million dollars in order to Just create, to get the broadband just width. Just to be able to capture the data. Right, just for the broadband width. That doesn't include the computers that are, that are necessary for the assessments. So you've got your iPads, you've got your computers, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So voters are probably going to start seeing a lot of bond issues for more money because this wasn't built into school budgets because, of course, the school boards really weren't. They weren't included in this either. They, they, they had to sign off on it. Mm -hmm. But we, what we have heard from school board members is that their superintendents just basically said, we have to do this, so we need to do this. Mm -hmm. So this has been this has been going on, you know, for three years, and it's just coming up to the surface. It's all been pretty much under the radar, but now school boards and voters are saying, wait a minute, we don't have any local control. We don't have any control over how our money is being spent. What's this all about? Okay, so let's back up one second. Say, let's just say that somehow there was an extra trillion dollars laying around just an extra trillion dollars in the bank and the federal government is just willing to turn this trillion dollars loose to all the uh, uh, school boards across the United States in order to do all this stuff. Now, it's not costing local people anything. Well, it does, but let's just say it's not, mm -hmm. no new bond issues are necessary. What's the problem? Well, the problem is you still have a very centralized method of education. You have no ability to adapt the curriculum, the, the standards, the assessments, your ability to teach your children how they need to be taught. If you're a teacher and you know your students well, if you see that a, a child is not getting it in a certain manner, the teacher does not have the autonomy or the authority to teach it in a different way because it's not being assessed in that way. And that's very important because part of this is that the teachers 
evaluation is tied into the assessments. Up to 50% of how a teacher is evaluated is how his or her children perform on the assessments. And remember, these are assessments that the teacher hasn't even seen or crafted. And yet his or her job is based on that. And these assessments may or may not be valid. I see. Mm -hmm. Now, where, where do the parents fit into all of this? Well, the parents weren't asked. Um, there is on I Desi's mean, website. When don't, uh -huh. let, me, let me ask a very basic question. Don't the superintendent <laughs> work for the parents? Well, that's in theory. <laughs> it's been rather flipped through the years is that the school board the school boards are your elected representatives, right. but how the majority of school boards tend to operate is that they look to the superintendent, and the superintendent, it has evolved in that the superintendent tells the board what the board needs to do. And generally, the school board members go, okay. There are a few school boards in Missouri and board members that are starting to ask questions of the superintendents. So we have to flip that back and have the voters and the parents understand that the board, those are those representatives and the superintendent works for the board, not the other way around. Okay, now, <clears throat> so you bring this to, an, to, uh, you know, to a group of parents who are sitting in a meeting somewhere that have no clue, they have not been involved for the last three years in this process, they just are hearing that there's some new things going on. What is it that you can tell these parents that says that I know more than the education establishment at my school system? Well, I would say ask your teachers, ask your administrators questions. How much is this going to cost? What kind of control do you have over the assessments? What will you do with my child if my child is flailing in this environment? What sort of autonomy do you have? Get the answers to those questions. Then start doing your own research. Look at the states that had implemented this that got raised to the top money earlier. Georgia, uh, Illinois, New York. Read what's coming from parents who have seen the work that their children are bringing home what's going on in the classroom when the parents go to help. And it's, very, it's anecdotal evidence, but they have been under Common Core. And since it's common, probably what's gonna happen there is gonna happen in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And I would urge parents to really look at the work that their children are bringing home. They're emotional, They're, it's, it's a totally different way of teaching. The, they, they will tell you we're not telling teachers how to teach, but we have teachers who have said they tell us how to teach. So parents just have to be aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to admit that um, in some places, not, not necessarily in all places, not even in most places, but in some places, schools have simply failed or the, the children or more to the point, the children simply aren't, um, they aren't being educated at the end of the day. I mean, we've all heard the stories about kids, if they graduate, a whole bunch of them don't even know how to read their diploma. Mm -hmm. Is this an answer to, I mean, is this how to solve that problem? And I, I guess I'm thinking as I'm talking to you, apparently there was just a handful of school districts, but they were in urban areas that were having tremendous problems, whereas school districts that were not in urban areas seemed to be having less problems. Why is it that everybody has to do it the same way? Why not treat the failing districts in one way and allow the, uh, uh, the districts that were doing fine and graduating bright kids do it their way? Well, that seems to be the way our government is <laughs> progressing right now, it's the same issue with health care. If you have 30 million people that are uninsured, why do we have to, why don't we talk about what do we do for those 30 million people versus destroying the system, making it all one common system? It's the same thing with education. 93% of Missouri schools were ranked proficient. 
So you had 7% of the rural and the urban schools who were not doing well. So instead, as you say, instead of saying, what are the components? Why aren't those schools working? What can we do? We decide, no, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have onto this common system along with 25 other states, and we are going to now make it all better for everyone. Well, no, you're kind of lowering the bar because you are looking to those schools that are failing and you're trying, but standards is not the answer. Standards will not create better schools. As you and I were talking, I think there are three components important in schools. You have student responsibility, parent responsibility, and teacher and administration responsibility. It's like a stool and you take out one of those legs and the stool's gonna fall. Mm -hmm. In this education reform, there is no responsibility for the parents or the students. It's all been placed on teachers and administrators. It's gonna fail because different kids need different things. And when you, have, when you lump all kids into one pot and say everybody's common and everybody's going to learn the same thing in the same way, it's bound to fail. Unfortunately, I really worry, though, about this current generation, especially those from kindergarten on, who are going to be under Common Core. We're going to run out of money, but I don't know what it's going to do to them developmentally. I've heard. What do you mean? Well, it's a different way of it's a different way of learning. It's 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 uh, the the teachers are very. You, for instance, first graders have to learn all about Mesopotamia and and talk about why that's so important in the culture. I mean, this is these are first graders. Kindergarten. This is in the standard. So this is going to be happening across all first grades everywhere. Yes. Okay. Yes. There's a great story that I reblogged from a mom in Chicago and she was helping her five-year-old daughter one day. They were doing map assessments and she tied it into Common Core because Common Core has been described as no child left behind on steroids as far as the standardized testing requirements. So she's helping these little kids and of course as I said they have to do computers now. She says so you have th th this group of five and six-year-old children and they're having to do these computers. And she said some, some of their hands were smaller than the mouse that they were trying to uh, you know, move around correctly. A lot of them can't read that well. And one little boy says, I want to click here. She says, no, you have to click there. I want to click there, five-year-old kid. Kids are getting frustrated, more and more frustrated. She looks over at a daughter a couple times. Her eyes are kind of filling with tears. And on the way home that day, they're driving home, and her daughter looks over at her, and she says, Mom, I'm just no good at kindergarten. And we have heard that from kindergarten teachers in Missouri. They say their kids are starting to check out in December. They're just done. Developmentally, when Common Core first came out, the Alliance for Early Childhood, 500 signatories said it was developmentally inappropriate for young children. That was given to the consortia. It was discarded. Mm -hmm. We've got about five minutes left here. Um, before we came on the air, you and I had a discussion about uh, the uh, Commissioner of Missouri, uh, Commissioner of Education of Missouri, uh, Christine Nicastro. Nicastro. Mm -hmm in a discussion that she had uh, on St. Louis television uh, about um, school districts and whether or not school districts should be the way in which education is centered or whether the uh, local control should be collapsed into a much larger area. Mm -hmm. Discuss, I mean, you, when we were talking about this, you knew all about it, you'd heard about this before, just discuss that idea, would you? Education reformers, which include Democrats and Republicans, if you do start doing enough reading on education reformers, there is a big push to do away with school boards. The whole idea is that they, they want to do away with any semblance of local control. Why? because it gives you a more centralized educational opportunity. It also will give direction of, or control of schools to mayors. 
So the mayors then can con it, it, it basically depending on who you believe, it's the destruction of public education as public. In other it words, it sounds like it's it's a political grab. I mean, if you're giving power to mayors and to larger areas, I mean that's suddenly you've just politicized education. Yes, and, and that's basically what it is. And, and it's gonna be that public-private partnership. There's a big push for charters, there's a big push for vouchers. Bad thing about vouchers that I'd like to, not necessarily against vouchers, but if you give vouchers, then you are accepting government money and that school will have to be under the government mandates, which means that that private school doesn't have the autonomy that it once did. In the last two minutes here, would you describe what you would like to see education be like? I would like, I would like to see the federal government pretty much hands off of education. My yeah. school district, it's 2% federal money. However, we have 100% of the mandates. I would like for schools to be able to have the authority to make good decisions, to have the voters' voice be heard. They're paying taxes for this. Property taxes. Property taxes. They're yeah. providing their children, but yet they are totally, they are told how that education has to be structured, what those kids have to learn, how they have to learn it. They have no voice whatsoever. It has to get back to more of a local community school feel. Structure, I mm -hmm. should say. I want to remind the uh, listeners that about somewhere between 60 and 70 cents of every dollar that they pay in property taxes goes to their local school district, right? Right, right. And so they, they are the biggest funders. That the property tax is the largest portion of money that school districts spend to pay teachers and to yes. run their schools. Three right? quarters of my property tax goes to schools, Kirkwood School District or Special School District. But yet we have little to no control. All we can do is hire and fire teachers and maintain physical properties. Pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And you would like to see where, where the people who are doing the paying have more say? I would think that would be more representative government. <laughs> and uh, in the last 30 seconds here, what have you found to be the case when you have addressed this issue of, I'm doing the paying, why aren't you doing the listening? Kind of a glaze goes over their eyes that that's really not the plan, that uh, my superintendent told me that he would do whatever Desi told him to do. That's where we are today. So this is the system that we have to break. This is what we have to change. We have to have people understand that they need to reclaim the power that has always been theirs. Okay, got it. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank I, you, I certainly appreciate your, your coming and talking to us. To my audience, I've been speaking with uh, Gretchen Logue. Uh, and we've been discussing Common Core Standards. Um, specifically, she's interested and lives in Missouri, but for those of you who are listening to this on YouTube, uh, it's coming to your state or is in your state right now, so you might want to think about this. Thank you very much for being with us today, and we'll see you next time.